uh, note packet I'll get to here in a second. What do we think, spring? There you go, spring equinox 2019. There you go. It's today. Sometime today, I guess. Oh, it's already recording. All right, good. You got a little spring equinox there if you're listening at home. All right, I need you to change. It's a symbol for transformations. Cross out the word transformations for me. Replace it with the word composition. Symbol for composition. You are going to start seeing this symbol a lot today, and that's like, it looks like a little degree symbol. All right. You can see some of it already throughout your uh, rest of your notes today. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Lowercase r for reflection. We'll put y axis down here. Here comes that symbol. Capital T for translation. I'll go four, six, and the point will be negative two, three. So we're going to see, start seeing some of this today. So you see your symbol for composition. Now, anybody have a question right off the bat? Thomas? That's not the one I was asking for. But two, two at a time. That's a composition. That's a composition. I'm going to do, I could I could add another symbol here and put a rotation at 90. I could do that. Anybody going to come up with a question here? Go ahead, Anthony. There you go. What do I do first? Do I reflect or do I translate first? Ready? These are red, and this is going to be a little tricky for you to remember. Performed right to left. All right, these compositions are performed right to left. So now let's an answer Anthony's questions. What would I do first? Translate, then whatever point I got from that, I would reflect over the y-axis, and I start with two, negative two, three. Okay, so that's what that's talking about right there. Everybody good? All right, first one up here. Everyone see the composition symbol? I want to do a couple reflections over L and M with the image of B. First of all, what type of lines are L and M? Parallel, perfect. So what happens when I reflect over two parallel lines? Well, read the composition. Which line should I uh, reflect over first? Line Y, because it's the one to the right. So let I want to see everyone's beautiful B now reflected over line L. I'm doing line L first because it's the one to the right, and I read these right to left. So everyone draw the capital B, how you think it would look reflected over line L. And we're just freehanded here. I don't need compasses or straight edges out. Distance doesn't change. So I'm hoping we have something that looks like this. Yes? And don't get on my case about, well, I think the upper hump is a little bit smaller than the lower hump. Get off my case. All right, get a life, actually. All right. Everyone good? Now continue reading right to left. I reflected over line L. Now I want that one reflected over M. So go ahead, take your current B and reflect it over line M. And there we go. That's the B we end up with. Everyone good? Here's what I need right now. What transformation could I have done from the beginning to go from my original B to my ending B? What transformation could I have done to go from my original B, the black one up there, to the purple one? What's up, Bella? I could have slide it. I could slide it, right? A translation. That is the first concept here today. It's when you reflect over what type of lines? Anytime you reflect over two parallel lines, it's the same as doing A, Bella? Translation. Okay. 
So anytime you reflect over two or more parallel lines, it's the same, or two parallel lines, it's the same as doing a translation. Are they always gonna be parallel? What other type of lines could I have? Intersecting lines. Let's figure that one out. What if the lines intersect now? I'm gonna start calling on you guys now, liven this up. Which line should I reflect over according to this composition here? Uh, boom, there it is. Should I just take a risk here? One out of 100, 43, nope, 40, nope, I'll be here all day, don't care, 70, don't care if you don't care, 30, nope, almost, 48, we're getting there, 37, nope, this is fun, 61, 36, 80, hopefully you're getting aggravated, 88, 22, one out of 100 chance back there, Madeline, what line do I reflect over? L, everyone do your best right now. Reflect C over L, draw it for me. Reflect C over L, draw it out. And then take that C and reflect it over M. Ooh, can we do that one now? Reflect it over M. So literally, if you fold your paper over M, where would that C go to? You can do it. Fold your paper if you need to. Take a little peek. Where's that C going if you fold it over M? And be in the ballpark. I'm not looking for greatness here. Something like that, good enough. Again, not looking for the greatness here. All right, so when you reflected over two parallel lines, it was the same as a translation. But now when the lines intersect, how could I have gone from my original C here to my ending C? Not a slide anymore, a rotation. So when you reflect over two intersecting lines, that's the same as doing a rotation. Two parallel lines, same as a translation. If they intersect, that's same as doing a rotation. All right. Uh, now we're going to come to this concept, glide reflection. You can, you can read it and cheat, but glide reflection. What's it seem like we're doing? Glide. A slide, a translation, and reflection, a reflection. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to slide, and we're going to reflect. Slide and reflect in either order. But here we go, everyone outside, here we go. Okay, so if you see here, again, reflect, slide parallel. All right, reflect, slide parallel. Again, the slide could come first, okay? But it's gotta be a reflection and a translation. Everyone all good there? All right, next up. Let's actually do a composition on a graph. So I will give you a second right now to please graph triangle text, T-E-X, and then we'll talk.
Okay, everyone see the symbol right there, composition. You tell me, which one am I gonna do first? Do I do the reflection or do I do the translation first based on that composition? Oh, okay, never mind. Not that I didn't wanna talk with anyone, I just wanted to keep it in the 100 one. 40, 72, 49, 17. What do I do first, the reflection or the translation? Why? Right to left, right to left. All right, so let's translate all of them. What's the zero telling me? Are my x-coordinates going to move anywhere? We're not going to move anything left and right. We're just going to move it where? Down five. All right, go ahead, everyone. So move it down, everything down five. Nothing changes on the x. And you could call it T prime, that's fine. And then I have one more, which is now keep going to the left, reflect it over the y-axis. So do that, call it double prime, and tell me what your coordinates are. So graph and state the coordinates of the double prime, the finish product. So t double prime, e double prime, x double prime, what's it end up being? Twenty-four. One out of a hundred shot. Here we go. What do you got? T double prime, Tom. E double prime. And X double prime. Thank you. Okay, no big deal. Right to left. Right to left. Okay, right to left. Good. Any issues there? All right. Next part here. Orientation. I remember we did those as freshmen. No, di total different orientation here. You have no idea. I'm getting starting to get aggravated now. 13, 13 in the house. Hi, Emily. Pick an order of the letters right now. Okay, she goes CBA. What direction did she just go? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Counterclockwise, CBA. All right, could she have gone ABC and we could have said clockwise? Sure. All right, but we're going CBA, that's in a counterclockwise direction. So we're gonna say this triangle going from CBA has counterclockwise orientation, all right? Orientation is the direction of the vertices. How you see it. Emily said, hey, go CBA. Billy might go ABC. Two different orientations, that's fine. All right, but it's the direction, the order of the vertices. All right, we should probably put of a figure. Rigid motion. What are those again? Rigid motion. Don't tell me. 
I'm just doing this because I know it's aggravating some of you, and I get joy out of that. Two? Okay, rigid motion. I got reflections. I got a translation. Any other rigid motions? Something that doesn't change size or shape. Rotation. Okay, everyone good? Now, I'm not going to put those under same orient, rigid motions with same orientation. Here's what I need from you to dig a little deep right now, either with you, by yourself or in your group. Which one of these right now, if I went back to my triangle, CBA, which one of these could I do? I can reflect it, translate it, rotate it, and it would still go CBA in a counterclockwise direction. If I turn it, is it still going to be CBA in a counterclockwise direction? Turn this figure. Is it still going to be CBA? I don't care how many degrees you turn it. Is it still going to be CBA? If you go CBA, is it still going to be counterclockwise? Yeah. Okay. So that's what one rigid motion that has same orientation is a rotation. Is there any others up on that list? If I slide a figure, is that going to change the order of the vertices? Nope. So translation. You guys aren't saying reflection, huh? If I flip a figure, you guys aren't saying reflection, huh? Even though I put three, there's three of them on there, right? There's still one more we're missing. We'll get to it in a second. If you flip a figure, will that change it? I don't know. Let's test it out. I'm just saying that's the same size. So if I flip it over that line, that dotted line, B prime will still be here, right? What's going to be over here? A prime, and then here will be C prime. Ready? What was your order again, Emily? Which direction am I going now, everybody? So does it change the orientation if I do a reflection? Yes. Yes. Okay. But whoa, don't even write down reflection. Don't write down reflection, and I'll show you why. What did I just reflect over? A line, okay, a line. So it's gotta be not just reflection, I need you to put line reflection. That is awful. What do you mean? Can we reflect over something else other than a line? And the answer is yes. We can, we haven't gotten to it yet till next week, but that's number three over here, is you can also reflect through a point and that will not change the orientation, as you'll see next week. What do I, I still got an empty one, don't I? Well, I won't put dilation there, why not? Dilation's not even gonna come up, it's not even a rigid motion. What do we just do out in the hallway? And what's part of a glide reflection? A reflection in a line, right? So that will change, these two will change the orientation of a figure. Questions there? All right, and the last part is what you are going to do on your own or in your group for about two or three minutes, and I'm gonna call on people. Am I doing a reflection, rotation, translation, or glide reflection as I go from A, B, C, D to G, H, C, D? Bless you. All right, you have to figure out which one I'm doing. Okay, reflection, rotation, translation, or glide reflection. So you can talk it over in your group. I'll call on four people to end this. A, B, C, D to G, H, C, D. Don't have one. 28? I don't care. I'm not going anywhere. 22? That is a rotation. 
Okay, hold on, hold on. Don't don't change it. Don't change it. I got A, B, C, D right here. Actually, let me go smaller. Okay, I got A, B, C, D right here, and I am going to G, H. Where's that one? G, H, this one right here. So it should be a, well, just reflection. Okay, we'll just take reflection for now. Don't get crazy on me back there. Everyone good? Reflection. Next one, what am I doing? 25. That is a rotation. Next one. Ooh, it looks like I'm over and going. Hmm. 34, 15. Nice, glide reflection, because I not only had to reflect it, everyone notice where you slide to? Parallel to that line you reflected over. Got to be parallel. And finally, last one, 31, 47, 76, 64. Just get it over with. Six. That is a translation, thank you. All right, questions about those? Okay, just make sure, go to the homework real quick. People usually do not read the full thing on number three. I just wanna make sure we're clear on what I'm asking here. All right, on number three, let me get it up myself. Okay, everyone on number three tonight. First thing, you're going to take zero, five, and two, zero. You're going to perform that composition. So what are you going to do first to it? How do I read the compositions? What am I going to do first? Reflect over the y-axis, then take those points and reflect it over the x. Everyone good? Keep focus here. Then at the end, you're going to look at A and B, and you're going to look at A double prime, B double prime, and I want to know what single transformation could I have done right from the beginning? Instead of reflecting twice, what could I have done from the beginning? Everyone understand that? So not only graph it, but then at the end, look at A to A double prime and B to B double prime and say, could I have translated, rotated, reflected? And try to get specific for me. If you're gonna say rotate, tell me how many degrees. If you're gonna say reflect, give me a line to reflect over. Okay, everyone good? Or translate how many units to translate. All right, go ahead, on you. Call me over if you got any 